Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at the atomic structure for elements 1 to 10. We'll be looking at atomic structure in terms of shell diagrams. So on these shell diagrams, we'll show the arrangement of the electrons in the regions outside of the nucleus, which of course are referred to as shells, energy levels, or sometimes you'll see some persons calling them orbits. Before we do that, we need to remember atomic notation. So on this side of the board, you'll see the big X, and that represents the symbol for the element. The A written to the top left-hand corner represents the mass number, and the Z written to the bottom left-hand corner now represents the atomic number or the proton number. To find the number of neutrons, you have to subtract the atomic number or the proton number from the mass number. So it's going to be A subtract Z, which of course would be equal to N, which is the number of neutrons. And these shell diagrams that I'll be creating, and these shell diagrams are a series of concentric circles that would show how the electrons are positioned outside of the nucleus. I'll represent the electrons using crosses, which looks like those X's, the X, right? Or dots. So let me now show the shell diagrams for elements 1 to 10. So the first circle that we'll draw belongs to the nucleus. And hydrogen has one proton. This is a proton number, the atomic number, and zero neutrons. So we'll put that in the first circle that represents the nucleus. The second circle is shell number one. On shell number one, we put one electron. I'm using dots to represent my electrons. All right, so we'll now draw the atomic structure or the shell diagram for helium, element number two. The first circle that we draw is the nucleus. So we have two protons and two neutrons. Then we draw shell number one. And on shell number one, we can hold a maximum of Two electrons. So when two electrons are in shell number one, that shell is full. There's something that I'll do after I've completed all of these shell diagrams, and that is the electronic configuration. I'll write those numbers beneath it. At this point, I want you to pause the video. If you do not have your notebooks, go and get them so you can draw these diagrams as I'm doing that. Alright? Element number three is lithium. So we have three protons, four neutrons. We have two electrons on the first shell, and because the first shell is full, we have to draw another circle and draw shell number two. On shell number two, we put the third electron. How do I know exactly how many protons, neutrons, and electrons have done these shells? You recall? What happens is that the number of protons is equal to this bottom number right here, which is set over there. So this is a proton number, the atomic number. So you just write 3 P, 3 protons. To get the number of neutrons, we apply that formula, which is the proton number subtracted from the mass number. So 7 minus 3, that's it, 4 neutrons. These are all neutral atoms that I'm drawing. So the number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons. So that is how I know how to put one electron here, and that would neutralize one proton in terms of charges. And I have two electrons here to match the two protons, and I will have three electrons here to match the three protons. So for beryllium, we have four protons and five neutrons. The first shell has two electrons, and the second shell now also has two electrons. Element number five is boron. So we have five protons and six neutrons. The first shell has two electrons. The second shell has three electrons. Element number six is carbon. We have six protons, six neutrons. On shell number one, we have two electrons. On shell number two, we have four electrons. Element number seven is nitrogen. And remember, this is the most abundant gas out there in the atmosphere. We have seven protons and seven neutrons. 
two electrons on the first shell and five electrons on the second shell. So we've been following perfect. Element number eight, we cannot live without this one. And this one is oxygen. We have two electrons on the first shell. That's full, we draw a second shell. And we now have six electrons on the second shell. Element number nine is fluorine. It's a very toxic element. It's the most electronegative element out there actually. And this one is in our toothpaste, so we can have healthy gums and teeth because we're killing the microbes that may make us have bad oral hygiene. Alright, so we have two electrons in the first shell, and we now have seven electrons on the second shell. Element number 10, we have this noble gas, and it's called neon. So we have 10 protons and 10 neutrons. The first circle is a nucleus. The second circle is shell number one. We have two electrons there, it's full. Then we have shell number two, and we have eight electrons there. At this point, shell number two is full because we can hold a maximum of these electrons there. So now that we're finished drawing these shell diagrams, the next thing we need to do is write the electronic configuration of all of these atoms right here. So I'm going to start from hydrogen. The electronic configuration tells the arrangement of the electrons on the shell. So EC, electronic configuration EC, is equal to one. We have one electron. For helium, EC is equal to two because we have two electrons on the first shell. For lithium, EC is equal to two comma one, or you can write two period one. Let me just put the R, or two dot one. So any one of these locations that you want, okay? For beryllium, the electronic configuration EC is equal to two comma two. For boron, EC, to 2, 3. Moving back to carbon, you can already guess that electronic configuration is equal to 2, 4. Let me pause right now. Do you notice something? When we have just one shell, we have one value written. Alright? So, is this one shell? So, one. So, is this one shell? We will have one value written. Because we now have two shells, we have two values written. Okay? So we have two indicating that two electrons are in the first shell, one indicating that one electron is in the second shell. Look at this one now. We have two indicating two electrons in the first shell, and two out here indicates two electrons in the second shell. And the same thing goes for there. So for nitrogen, the electronic configuration EC is equal to two, comma. Five. For oxygen, EC is equal to 2, comma, what is this 5? 6. For fluorine, EC is equal to 2, comma, 7. For neon, EC is equal to 2, comma, 8. There's another thing that we must point out. If you get the periodic table right now, you'll realize that the number of electrons in the outer shell corresponds to the group number. So lithium is in group 1. Beryllium is in group 2. Boron is in group 3. Neon is in group 8 or group 0. Fluorine is in group 7. Oxygen is in group 6. Nitrogen is in group 5. Carbon is in group 4. So you'll see that pattern. If you want to pause the video, you go ahead and do that. So you can go ahead and look at the periodic table and correlate the values that I'm showing you with the group numbers. Another thing to note now from the electronic configuration is that the amount of um, numbers that are written right, right here now, for example, two, one, we have two values written here. So that indicates that we have two shells. If we have one value, then of course, that will be one shell. And the number of shells corresponds to the period. 
So the PRX squat cross, they go horizontally. Ropes are the columns, and the rows now are the periods in the periodic table. So you'll see that lithium is in period 2, group 1, beryllium is in period 2, group 2, boron is in period 2, group 3. So those are things that we need to know now about atomic structure, and these again are what we refer to as shell diagrams, in particular they're called dot and cross diagrams. Okay? So you've been learning science of this is see you in class. See you for the next video in which we'll do elements number 11 to 20. See you. Bye.